Hi, this is Deborah Peters, and welcome back to this episode of the Deborah Peters Show, coming at you from downtown Los Angeles on this January day where it's blue skies, but it's chilly, and the air is brisk, and I welcome the change in the temperature. I hope you do too. It's the beginning of a new year. It's a new month. And there's just so much possibilities available to all of us. So there's a lot I want to share with you today on this show, on this episode of Bending Reality, part two. The energy of creating your business and your life. And as we've come to discover, there is no separation between who you're being and what you're creating, between what you're thinking and what you're experiencing. So I'm very much looking forward to having you join me. We are airing now Tuesdays and Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we are minus eight GMT. Um, so if you're in the UK, this is gonna be 8.30 in the evening for you. If you're in Europe, it's going to be 9.30 in the evening. If you are in Turkey, it's going to be 11.30. And if you are in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, it's going to be 12.30 in the morning, actually. So very much excited to have you here. And I'm going to give people a chance to just jump on the show and, uh, and join us and uh, be a part of what we're creating here today. So it, it's Friday, and Fridays are often viewed as, um, you know, the slide into the weekend. And I really think it depends on your point of view and uh, how you look at life. If you, if you see yourself needing to have um, time away because you're not really enjoying what you're doing during the week, then yeah, the weekends are often a welcome kind of um, reprieve, if you will, from everything that you need to do all week long. Uh, I think for a lot of people that are entrepreneurs or small business owners or they're creatives, doesn't matter if it's Wednesday or Monday or Sunday, you know, when you're in the flow, you're in the flow. So on today's show, I want, I'm going to be covering off with you some more tools around mindset and how to actually use energy to create and to bend your current reality into a reality that you would really like to be experiencing. So much has changed over the last decade in terms of our awareness of what it is that we can create um, in terms of our capacity for growth and for expansion around the use of our mind and our understanding of how energy actually works. So what if you could change your circumstances to have the experiences that you want to have instead of having to sort of endure experiences that you don't want as something that you need to get through until you get to a point where you're able to have the experiences that you want to have. And for me, this is really uh, why I do what I do and what I believe humanity has been um, setting itself up to realize and to, to come to terms with. I would say the last week or so, I've, I've just been getting a lot more awarenesses quicker. You know, in the past, I always received information from source very easily. Um, so that was never a question. What's happening for me now is the awareness is coming in faster. And so with that said, I can apply it really quickly and really easily. Now, um, one way of 
speeding up your ability to receive, I used to call them downloads, now we'll call them awarenesses, your ability to receive awarenesses is to actually um, take a moment, you know, that old concept of the gratitude list, take a moment to sort of uh, short list or list out um, what you are receiving as an acknowledgement to the universe and just like stop for a minute and say thank you. And I, I, I believe that this is what's really increasing for me is I don't have to sit down anymore and um, kind of, you know, take myself through a logical process of writing out what I want to be grateful for or what I want to bring to my, to my attention that I, I could be grateful for. Instead, it just is happening very organically where something will take place, a call will come, an email will show up, a thought will appear, a breakthrough will happen. And just really organically in that moment, I'm saying right out loud, and I recommend you do this. You just say it right out loud. And I'll just say, thank you. Thank you so much for this gift. Thank you so much for this awareness. Thank you so much for this idea. Thank you so much for this guidance. And to actually say the words out loud, because what that does is it brings in more, you know, it expands our ability to receive. And that's really the key is expanding your ability to receive. So um, thank you for joining us, Kimberly. You know, I saw your message come in a few minutes ago. And um, while I was doing the intro to this show, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I could uh, click over to, uh, to the other browser and, and send you a message and tell you where we are <laughs> without losing the show. So I had all of this stuff going on in the back of my mind. So I'm glad you found us. And, um, you know, as we build up this time slot, it's definitely different. I think people were used to the 430 time slot. Um, it just works really a lot better in terms of flow to the day. Um, and so I hope this is working for everyone. And I thank you for being here and sharing the show and uh and subscribing to to my youtube channel where i upload these as a recording once the the show is done so you, you have it in archives and you can basically go there and you can revisit and you can grab more tools and you can apply the the processes so what do i have for you today i have a couple of announcements to to start with before i get too far down the path here but what I, what I do have is Bending Reality Part 2. And, and I've created one, two, three, four, five really significant steps that you can take immediately on a daily basis. And you don't have to do it, you don't have to like force yourself to do it or, or effort at it or make it like this linear logical thing. You can just do it on the fly. You know, you can do it while you're doing dishes. You can, you know, I live in an urban environment. So I do it when I'm walking down the street. I do it when I'm walking to the gym. I do it when I'm walking to meet friends for dinner. When I'm, when I'm driving to go see a client, if, if I'm doing some kind of corporate training program, you can do this on the fly. And I'm really big about that. The, the, the least, the smallest adjustment for the biggest result. You know, sometimes it's just about tweaking one molecule, and then what that does is it creates this exponential shift all the way across the board. And if you watched or attended to my last show when I did part one, I talked about how um, our unconscious mind is made up of a series of zeros and ones, and really essentially from a um, digital perspective, if we were to just switch one zero to a one or one one to a zero, that would change the entire algorithm and we would get a completely new set of results. 
when you when you tweak one molecule, when you shift one small pivotal idea, point of view, limiting belief, thought, emotion, then the ripple effect from that is enormous. And it can cause your entire life to change and shift and become something else right in a nanosecond. Which brings me to another point, and that is that time really isn't that big of a deal anymore. You know, we were so, as a humanity, and functioning within the Newtonian paradigm, uh, Newtonian physics age, we were so caught up in time. And everything had to be like this, you know, there had to be timelines to everything. Um, and it's not to say that things still don't take time. It's not what I'm saying, but I'm also saying that it's all a matter of perception too, because all there really is is now and everything is happening now, which means there's no past and there's no future. There's just now. And if you can uh, learn to govern your mind in such a way that it always stays in present time, something really miraculous takes place. And one of the most miraculous things that happens is you stop worrying. Worry breaks down health, it breaks down your body, it breaks down the functionality of your organs, the communication between your conscious and your unconscious and the superconscious. It just has such an enormous negative impact. So, um, so let's dive into today's program, Bending Reality, Part 2, The Energy of Creating Your Business and Your Life. Um, so first of all, I want to talk a little bit about taking action. Now, do we need to take action in life for us to experience the things that we want to experience? And, and the answer is unequivocally yes. Absolutely. I get asked all the time about the secret and um, the secret was a wonderful, singular, universal law that was brought to light um, through kind of mainstream media, I suppose. And um, it was a, it was a game changer for sure. You know, if we look in history at certain people that have come forward with um, a new way of presenting how the universe works that appeals to current time, particularly, uh, you know, with, with digital media, social media, etc., cetera, um, then yes, it's always an up level. But it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's another way of looking at age old principles. And I do get asked about the secret all the time and my response is exactly what I just said. You know, it was a wonderful introduction. What was failed to mention is that we do need to take action. Um, however, action is not the cause of creation. Just like, um, you know, I, I just finished teaching my last online course, Shift, Change, and Heal Your Money Story. And in that program, we talked about and we explored that um, um, the concept behind money being the creation of something actually is erroneous. It's not money that creates something and it's not action that creates something. It's actually our, first off, it's our thought, right? It's, you know, it's like money didn't create my computer. It was the thought behind my computer idea that then created the computer, which then led to all the steps, which money became part of that equation, as it truly is with the rest of our lives. So when you look at it from the perspective of, okay, what's really the creation point of anything? whether that's good health, wealth, joy, <laughs> happiness, fun, 
um, you know, the clothes we're wearing, the home we live in, the car we drive, the friends we have, what is the creation of that? At the end of the day, it comes back to our thought. And so, because reality is not solid, you know, reality is this malleable, energetic, moving process that we can shift and grow and develop based on how we think. So it really does behoove us to put ourselves into alignment with our higher self, which is infinite, which is capable of anything, which creates from an energetic level. So before we actually go out into the world to, to create on, on a mundane level, let's give it that language. So, you know, for example, if we just take the first step, if you think of something that you want, okay, so maybe you want to close your eyes for a second and you want to think of something that you want. Now, there's two ways of looking at this thing that you want. One is the lack of it being in your life, and two is uh, what it will provide for you when you allow it to yourself to receive it. So if you're looking at it from the lack of having it, we call that an away from, and there's really only so much leverage you can get on yourself when it's an away from driver because as soon as the urgency wears off about not having it then we kind of take our foot off the gas in terms of the creation of it and the biggest way that you block something from coming into fruition is through your negative thinking and I'm going to talk about that as we go through this process. So if you are creating something from a place of, hey, I don't have this and I want to have this, then usually what ends up happening, as soon as you get really close to the having of it, um, or maybe you've had it for a while, then you kind of, you know, stop generating, right? And what we want to do is we want to stay in alignment with the thing that we say that we want. So the most effective way to create something that you want is to actually create it as a toward. So you're moving toward it. You're moving toward the tangible outcome of it. You're moving toward what it creates in your life. You're moving toward what it contributes to you. You're moving toward what you contribute to it. And this becomes then the dance energetically. So, Essentially, what you want to do is you want to create a declaration in your mind that this is so. And so it's not about asking. Um, I, I suppose probably one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say, well, it wasn't meant to be. Or if it's meant to be, it will happen. It's like, look, guys. First of all, nothing is meant to be unless you make it so. And secondly, anything's meant to be when you make it so. What this does is it demystifies our power. When we say something is, um, if, some, if something's meant to be, it will happen, we're really not committed. We're really not invested. We're really not in ownership of that which we say that we want. So I would just invite you to take that um, statement completely out of your vocabulary because you're cutting yourself off energetically from what it is that you want to create. And realize that, first of all, nothing's meant to be unless you create it as such. And also, anything is meant to be because you're creating it as such. We are co-creators. On a physical level, we are creating. And energetically, we're creating too. And this is what humanity is coming to realize now, is that we are energy. It's not something we get. 
it's not something outside of us. It's not out there. It doesn't, um, there's no force holding it away from us. We don't have to stand on our heads to be worthy of it. Energy is all the time. And it's up to us to connect to it and draw it through us. You know, it, it, it's like um, being a conduit. So if you were to imagine that you are, let's say you're, you're, you're rubber, electric, an electrical current will not pass through rubber, okay? But if you're a metal or some kind of conduit that, uh, that serves as a pathway for electricity to pass through, then electricity will always pass through. So let's say in a metaphor sense here that your negative thinking is like rubber. What it does is it builds up this insulator around you that stops the energetic current from flowing through you. So limiting beliefs, negative emotions, criticism of others, judgment, needing to control, um, limiting points of view, gossip, uh, you know, all of these energetic tie-ins become energy blocks. And they, they literally create like this barrier of insulation around you that keeps you from receiving the, the universal flow of all that is, all right? So I'm going to say that again. Your limiting beliefs, uh, negative self-talk, self-criticism, um, fear, doubt, gossip, um, cynicism, um, you know, trying to, to change things that really don't have anything to do with you control mechanisms, you know, these kinds of things serve as these uh, energetic barriers that block you from being in the flow of all that is. And if you could imagine standing in a river, right? If you're standing in a river and you build a wall around you, then the water can't reach you. So if the wall is represented by your negative thinking, your programming, your conditioning, like basically your blocks to receiving, right? Then the river of water, that water cannot reach you. So you basically are holding yourself, um, like you're holding the possibilities out at arm's length away from you so that it cannot come and give to you. And so dropping your barriers around that is a good thing to do. You can just say to yourself, you know, I'm just dropping my barriers, dropping my barriers, dropping my barriers. You can um, release and, and recant and renounce and destroy and delete anything that's keeping you from being in that receiver mode. You can step into a space of gratitude and appreciation around everything that you're receiving and you're experiencing and you're being, your being, your being, right? So these are the, these are the keys to bending reality because what that does is it basically pulls that whole wall down so that the, the river of energy of blessings, of grace, of universal um, malleability based on your thought patterns can actually serve you and contribute to everything that you're asking for. The problem is, is most people, well, the problem, the problems are, the blocks are, you know, one, maybe you don't even ask. Two, you ask, but you don't expect to win. Three, um, you ask, maybe you expect to win, but you doubt, all right? 
And then maybe four is you ask, but you, you, you cut yourself off with not truly being committed, which is the next thing I want to, to cover off with you. So um, you want to shift your observation by thinking about your desire for maybe five, maybe 10 minutes at a time once, at least once a day. Look, you can do anything for five or 10 minutes once a day, right? If you can call up a friend and complain to some about something, you can do this. <laughs> if you can troll around online and entertain yourself with the news at negative media, you can do this for yourself. So essentially what you want to do is just focus five to 10 minutes a day and really draw in like pulling energy toward you and draw in that which you you are asking for and then just say it out loud you know just literally say it out loud but don't when you say it out loud don't ask you know you know you're not asking the universe can i have this because here's the deal i think as a society Hi, Saeed, nice to see you. Um, I think as society, we've been taught that it's like the Santa Claus theory, you know? We've been taught that there's some kind of force outside of us, and it's usually in the form of a, an old guy with a long gray beard sitting on the clouds deciding if we're good enough to be given that which we are asking for. And so as a, as a society, you know, this is a really deep program that's been running for probably centuries and that keeps the masses, it keeps most people in lack and poverty and scarcity and poorness, you know, poorness, like poor health, poor wealth, poor whatever, love, happiness, relationships, whatever. And so I suppose that would really be your first quantum leap, would be to decide that the power is right here. And there's really nothing outside of you that is deciding for you. Because as long as you buy into that belief system, that paradigm, that there's something outside of you deciding for you, you will always be at the mercy of that decision, which will undermine absolutely every intention that you have to create anything and everything in your life. And that really is where the rubber meets the road. Because until you get to that place, you can, I can give you every tool, every tool, and it's always going to come up short. And then you're going to step back and go, see, those tools don't work, which is so not true. The tools always work. It's, it's not the tools that don't work. It's your mindset that's blocking you. So, um, you really have to live that which you're asking for. You really, you really have to demand it. So you're not asking the universe, can I please have you know, a new car? <laughs> can I please have a new lover? You're not asking and begging. You're declaring it. It's a declaration. You are demanding it. It's like, this is my intention. I'm creating this. Now bring it. It's that simple. You know, it's like making a demand and then aligning that demand with yourself and paying attention to the inspiration that comes around that. Because in that co-creative space, right? You're, you're the vehicle, and let me break it down this way. So let's say you get in your car and you wanna go across town 
and you don't really know how to get there, so you plug it into your GPS, right? So you plug it into your GPS, but if you don't actually put the car into gear and start driving, the GPS doesn't start commanding. The GPS will, will calibrate, and then, you know, the GPS will calibrate based on your movement toward where you want to go. And that's like, oh my God, that is such a great metaphor. And that was not planned. I mean, I just, I'm seeing myself in, in my car with firing up my GPS to go somewhere. And I could just imagine how frustrating it would be. And I don't want to think about this for too long, but just imagine how frustrating it would be to sit in the car, the GPS at the ready, you've hit go, but you don't put the car in gear and you don't step on the gas. GPS isn't going to do anything. It's, it's like it's waiting for you. And that's basically how universal energy works. You know, you put the command out to the universe and then the universe is like, all right, your wish is, you know, your wish is yours. Like it's, it's a done deal. And all you have to do guys is start moving toward that outcome. And as soon as you put the car in gear and you step on the gas and you start driving, then the GPS consistently calibrates to get you to that end goal. It will take you around traffic. It will take you on the shortest route. You know, you can, you can tell it what it is that you want and it will deliver it to you every single time. And if you make a wrong turn, meaning if you get distracted by negative thinking, it will recalibrate you and it will always invite you back onto point. It will always invite you back onto the path, your path. And that's essentially how this works. And it's not rocket science. And it's so easy. You just have to make the intention, get into alignment with the feeling of it, and then state it out loud and listen to the guidance, listen to the inspiration, and take action on what is given to you. Even if it looks like it isn't connected. Do you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it'll be, you know, go to this thing or go to this event or go talk to these people or just go to the end of the block and get a coffee. And you'd be like, but I don't want a coffee. It's like, doesn't matter. Just go. And you go and you end up talking to someone that totally can contribute to what it is that you're creating. Or maybe you, it isn't even about talking to someone, you know, it's about getting out of your environment, going to somewhere new and just shifting the energy. You know, as soon as you start to move physically, the energy starts to shift and then the ideas come. So it doesn't always have to be an idea from outside. It could be a download from, from spirit, from source, from your inner being, the universe, whatever word you want to give that, right? And so then it's taking action on that. What I do when that comes is I thank it. And so I'll have a little conversation with myself and I'll say, you know what? Thank you so much for that guidance. I am so glad that I trust myself and I listen to my inner guidance because it always steers me in the direction that is in direct alignment with my desired outcomes. And that is how I get all my material. You know, everything that I'm covering in these shows comes to me in this way. And it's very organic because I get into alignment every day. I meditate, do my energy pulls. I spend time outdoors in nature. I'm always in that space. And when I fall off, I, bring myself back in and it only takes a minute. It's just a short minute. So, um, 
here's what I wanted to, uh, to say. Um, I have a few more notes that I wanted to cover with you. So action is like the middleman. Um, I, I, I watch on social media where everybody's talking about massive action and grinding it out and getting it done and making it happen. And I just think, okay, you know, that's one way. It's not the only way. It's not the most effective way. And it certainly is not the path of least resistance. Because action is the middleman. Action does not create an outcome. Action is a, a symptom of your intention. It is a symptom of your inspiration. It is a symptom of your inner guidance. That's all. Because if you don't know what you're acting on, the action is meaningless. And we call that busy work. It's really about designing specific outcomes and demanding that the universe provides the outcome, not having any conversation around how, and then just taking inspired action and trusting, trusting, trust is the biggest key. If you had a package of seeds, that were apple seeds, right? Let's say they were Granny Smith apple seeds. And you went and you planted them in fertile soil. Fertile soil would be your willingness to take action. And you planted them in that fertile soil. You wouldn't expect oranges to grow. You would not expect apples not to show up you would you would assume by having these granny smith apple seeds that you are going to get trees with granny smith apples and this is the approach that is critical that you take with your goals that you take with your intentions when you plant that seed there really must be an element a strong element of trust that you are going to get exactly the fruit of the seed that you planted because if you're doubting it's like cutting off that current so if you can imagine it's like a, an electrical current running toward you and in that electrical current is every possibility you've ever asked for right? And then if you were to say, uh, but I don't know if it's actually going to get to me, it would be like cutting off the electrical current. It would be like snipping the wire that the current is flowing through. So please don't do that to yourself. There's, you know, when someone says to me, um, I'll try, it's like, well, there's, first of all, there's no such thing as try. <laughs> Remember Yoda from Star Wars? There's no such thing as try. You either do or you don't. So when someone says, I'll try, what that tells me is they are not committed. Not committed. When someone says, well, we'll see if this works, they're not committed. Um, if someone says, well, um, you know, when I figure out how, then, then it'll happen. I know that they are not committed to their outcome. When you are creating your relationships with people, please pay attention to what is being said because they are telling you how they run their mind. It has nothing to do with you. It's how they run their mind. They don't have the capacity in their mind to commit to the achievement of something. That's their block, not yours, okay? So really pay attention to what people are saying and understand where their commitment level is before you get too far down the rabbit hole and get too engaged with them. This is true for marriages, for friendships, for business partners, for clients, you know, I, 
literally do a discovery call with every client before I put them into a program to make the decision if they're a fit for the program for this very reason. Because I'm not willing to take on a client that isn't committed to their own greatness. Why would I? If they can't commit to their greatness, why should I? You know, I cannot get more excited about your greatness than you can. And that's really the bottom line here. So um, total commitment and decision is what connects you to the universe. When you decide, that decision is what sends a command to the universe and draws to you what you're asking for. Draws to you what you are asking for. Because what you are seeking <clears throat> is seeking you. That was a big one. <laughs> Made my throat tickle. Um, yeah, try is not committed, Kimberly. You are so right. So what you are seeking is seeking you. And when you get into alignment with it, meaning when you commit in here, it is drawn to you. And this is the point of doing the energy pulls. Instead of you going out and chasing it, like the people that are talking about grinding it out and making it happen, they're chasing stuff, chasing, chasing, chasing where what they're doing is they're making up in action where they're not in alignment with themselves. And we have a whole world based on that, a whole world that is in this shift process. And it is absolutely my pleasure to deliver these tools and contribute to that shift process. So um, clear, out loud, declare, demand, tell the universe what you're creating, and then tell it to give it to you. Give it to me now. Give me, thank you for giving me what I just declared, whatever that is for you. Um, speak it into existence. And also, um, stay away from negative self-talk. So the last thing that should be important to you is the how. Because if you're in a place of how, then um, you're basically blocking what it is that you want to come to you. And this is the biggest energy block that most people have is the how. They think they need to figure out how before they can go take action. They think they need to figure out how in their strategic plan. Hey, Jason, you're, you're, you're just jumping on with us as we're wrapping up, but it's going to be a great recording and I'm going to pop it up on my YouTube channel for you and the rest of the world. So you want to get to this place within you that you um, accept your own power. You know, bending reality is really about accepting your own power and that there's not anyone or anything outside of you that is deciding for you. That it's, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And that is the bottom line. That is the absolute bottom line. So that's a show for today. Um, I'd like to do a little recap with you. Uh, before I do, I want to invite you to next week. So Tuesday is a new episode. And then Wednesday, I'm doing a webinar. And I'd love to invite you to my webinar. Um, 
I have a new website that we're launching and uh, I think we're going live with it over the weekend. So it's going to be an opportunity for all of that to populate. And then I'll have a new website for you guys on, on Wednesday during the webinar. And the webinar is going to be based around how to shift and um, heal and change your money story. Because it's just really time to start applying these tools to money. Creating money, receiving money, allowing more flow of money toward you and to learn how to use energy and pull it towards you and make that be about money. So within that, um, next week's show topic is going to be all about matching energy and money rather than matching action and money. And, and so this is the next shift of consciousness that I'm ushering forward for humanity is we have, you know, traded time for money for so long and we've given action a price tag, right? We've given how much action, how much grinding it out, how much making it happen, how many hours we can work around the clock and how we can sacrifice our vacations and all of this narrative. And we've given it a price tag and we've said, you know, the more sacrifice, the more money I can have. Well, what if it really had nothing to do with any of that? And it really had to do with energy. So that's my next show. And that's going to be happening on Tuesday at 1230. And then on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have a webinar. I'd love to have you come and join my webinar. And I'm going to be sharing how to shift and change your money story so you can actually let go of those energy blocks that keep you from receiving and allowing more flow of money into your life. And you'll see when that happens, everything else wakes up too. So thank you so much for joining me. Just a really quick recap is that reality is not solid. So whatever you're experiencing right now can easily be shifted because energy is not solid. And you can, uh, sorry, reality is not solid, it's malleable. So whatever's going on right now, you can change it like that in the blink of a thought, okay? And you want to think of something that you want and you want to get into the feeling of it. And then you want to create a declaration in your mind and immediately the universe responds. So you have to expect it. You have to expect that what you've asked for is already done, right? And then as the um, possibility of that is created in energetic form, listen to the guidance that you get. Listen to what the universe is telling you, who to call, what to think, how much to sleep, where to go, what to email, you know, all of the guidance is there and it's free. It's free. It's always coming to you. Just have to draw that to you through your meditation and through your energy pull on a regular basis and then expect to win and tell the universe to give it to you. So that my friends is bending reality, the energy of creating your business in your life part two. Thank you for following me on Instagram at nei 4 changecom uh, sorry, NEI for change. And also my YouTube channel is Neuroengineering Institute. And we've got a whole bunch of really great classes coming up for you this year. Starting later in January is the Shift Change Heal Your Money Story online course. It's a nine week program and I'm taking applications for that now. And then February 22nd, 23rd live in Los Angeles is the Business Accelerator Bootcamp. And we've got some great guest trainers coming in and some really good material for you. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you guys for commenting, being a part of my tribe. Love you. Have a blessed weekend and um, make this the absolute best day of your life. Take care. Ciao.